Hey guys, so I just wanted to make a quick video on how you can update your Hobby King KK2 board. So, um, we're gonna obviously need a KK2 board that you want to update. Then we're going to need some kind of USB ASP device. And this is actually an eBay clone. Alright. But they all basically serve the same purpose. You're gonna need a wire, and I think this is a 12 pin, I believe, or something along those lines. And then you're gonna need a 6 pin adapter. Whenever it's a wire or a PCB like this. Okay, so that's a 6 pin. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this into uh, Windows or OS X or some kind of computer. And, alright. And now we're gonna take it from here to the computer. Okay, so the first time you're gonna plug in your USB ASP device, well, Windows is gonna tell you that it can't find the driver. So, you're gonna have to download the driver from the link down below in the description bar. You're going to have to extract it to a folder in your computer and then you're going to have to go to device manager. Okay. Then it's going to have, there's going to be an icon that pops out saying USB ASP. Right now it's under, I did install the driver so it's under libUSB Win32 devices, USB ASP. We're going to right click and then we're going to update the driver software. You're going to browse the computer and then you're going to browse for it. In this case, it's USB is just a general folder that you extracted, right? And then it's going to do its thing, in, and then it's going to install. Uh, once that's done, we're going to get back to the camera view. Okay, so now that we've got our USB ASP device running on the computer, we're going to follow the wire to our adapter. Okay. And our adapter will actually be labeled, and let me zoom in here for you so you can see that. And there you go, so you can see the pins. Now, I'm not really sure which way it goes first, so let's just try to plug it in. And this obviously goes into on the KK2 board in these pins. And you know, if you put it the wrong way, as I'm putting it now, okay, sorry, that's the right way. There you go. The board is going to turn on. If you put it the wrong way, it's not going to turn on, so just flip it and it's going to plug in. There's only two ways you can plug it in, six pin obviously. So now it's the board lights up, it's on. And if you have a USB ASP device that has some kind of jumper that tells you 3.3 volts or 5 volts, mine doesn't have that, it's just 5 volts, you'll want to select it to 5 volts because that's what the KK2 runs off of. So now we're going to get back to the computer and keep this plugged in. Right guys, so now we're going to go to the second thing we downloaded and you're going to, it's called the KK Multicopter Flash Tool. So you're going to have to extract that and then you will need Java to run this. In this case, I'm going to run the Win32. If you have 64-bit, you can run that. Both of them work. So we're going to double click that, run, and then we're going to be presented with this window here. Let me full screen this for you. So um, the, to the top, you're going to select the kind of programmer you have. In my case, USB ASP, that's good, um, even though it's a clone. Um, you can select the port, in this case only one, because I only have one thing plugged into my laptop. The controller is a, you're going to go the KK2 board, 32 KB flash. Then down here, you're gonna go all all firmware types, select KK2, and then you're gonna look under the firmware to find the one you want. In this case, the latest is KK2.0 1.6 by Captain Cook, and there are other ones you can select, like the one by Spectrum SAT, which you know, try it on your own. But the official ones are the ones by Captain Cook. So. Once we're done with this, we're going to see a little, you can actually look for information if you want. It's going to give you some info on that, on the RC groups, right? But, in this case, we're just going to click the yellow, the green to start, and it says flash to select the firmware from the internet. It's going to flash it. In this case, we've had an error, so let's try to unplug our USB SP device, plug it back in. Okay, so now it should be recognized. Okay. There you go, so now we're writing. In a few seconds it should be done. 
just to note, our KK2 board right now is a blank screen. It's still light lit up, but it's blank, and that's what is supposed to happen as it's writing the firmware. Now it's reading. And in a few seconds, it should be done. There you go, so flashing the firmware was successful. And now let's get back to the KK2 board and I can show you the result. Right, so we're back to our KK2 board and now you can it's changed a little from the previous firmware we've had. And you can obviously see now it's done because it's telling you the new information and it's obviously working. If it doesn't work, um, you know, you'll probably have to reflash it again. Um, one thing you don't want to do is don't attempt to flash it anywhere on these pins. You have to use the actual programming pin pins, obviously. So, you know, don't even try to do something like that. But, you know, as long as it works, good job. You, you're just done. Now you can just... Um, remember, this actually wiped all your settings off that you used to have. So, back them up at the beginning. And then, you know, you can show more layout and do whatever you could used to be able to do before. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. See you later.